And in one of my first conversations with John Krasinski, he mentioned to me that one of his missions with this franchise was to expand the potential for what Thriller can do and how it can lend itself to other textures and tones. And I think what is uh, this, what is in line with the last two A Quiet Places that we saw is that this film is very character driven. Uh, so yes, there are creatures and yes, there are scares, but the investment is really in the characters. What is so brilliant about this concept of A Quiet Place is that you an audience is really forced to um, survive their own thoughts as they're watching these movies because it's quiet, you know, so you have a lot of time to hear yourself. <laughs> and uh, I think that's what makes them um, so intriguing and so popular. I think fans are going to be excited to meet a whole new host of characters in a world that they're familiar with. I think that they're going to be enthralled by the love letter that this film is to New York City, a city that means a lot to the people who live in it, but also, I think, to the world, you know? New York has a personality unto itself. And I think it's a reference point that a lot of people understand. I am really excited to join the Quiet Place franchise and universe. I really enjoyed the first films. I thought they were innovative and fresh and exhilarating. And now we get to tell a whole new story with Day One. So in A Quiet Place Day One, we have gone back to the beginning of what happened before the aliens invaded the Earth. And we meet Samira, who is on a day trip to New York when they arrive. And she obviously has to adjust to this new world and figure out a way to survive. And on the way, she meets Eric, a perfect stranger, who she has to figure out how to survive with. I think the fans of this franchise will be most excited to see it on a new scale. We're no longer in on a small remote farm in the middle of nowhere. We are in busy New York City, bustling. So you can imagine the scope and scale of what that means when this invasion happens. Day one of the invasion in New York City comes with chaos and pandemonium. Nobody knows the new rules of the world and everybody has to learn them and we take you on the journey of how that happens. Feels wonderful to be a part of this franchise. I think it's a franchise that people have a lot of reverence for and a very loyal fan base and the fact that I get to contribute to it in any way is beyond anything I could have imagined. In day one, we follow our lead character, Samira, played by Lupita Nyong'o, navigate a pretty risky day in New York as day one of the alien invasion approaches. She then meets Eric, a mysterious man in a tight spot in New York, played by myself, and we watch them become friends and negotiate this uh, new quiet apocalypse. What separates day one from the previous two installments is that it's set in an urban environment. The previous two were set in a more rural uh, situation. And here we find two strangers collide in an urban environment which is very noisy and they have to be extremely quiet. We have an excellent cast in this film. Lupita is our wonderful lead. Uh, she plays Samira brilliantly. Uh, and the prospect of working with her was something that I couldn't uh, really believe or deny. Alex Wolf is in it. He'll be doing his thing in it, quietly. Jarman Honsu, brilliantly reprising his role. I think fans can be very excited to see a familiar franchise and a familiar world that they've grown to love in a very new setting with brand new characters and it's even quieter than before, could you believe it?
and it feels kind of surreal because New York is so noisy. So if it's ever not noisy, if it's ever quiet, it feels uh, very odd and kind of ominous. And I think that that's a great backdrop for what this story is about. There are moments that are, I think are going to be really terrifying and thrilling. You get to know these these monsters and and in a deeper way, not just in kind of the um, surface way. Whenever you do a new installment in a franchise, I think it's really important to reinvent it um, if you're a new filmmaker. And I think what Michael brings to this is a tenderness. And I think that the first two movies are, are deep in many ways, but I think this takes it even further in that direction. Well, I am uh, Jimon Hunsu, and uh, I play Henry, the man of the island. This is day one, uh, explaining how these creatures came to, uh, to Earth and um, um, uh, the devastation that took place. Well, it's a completely different perspective, a different environment, a different setting, uh, and uh, uh, this one is so much more um, devastating to uh, to witness you know um, you know of course we all know what New York is like uh, on a daily basis 24/7 uh, uh, and here to uh, witness how a city so vibrant and so uh, full of people uh, gets shut down and gets uh, completely uh, overwhelmed by this uh, you know this type of creatures. Uh, Day one, I mean, we've never been faced with such a dramatic uh, 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 and, um, you know, uh, horrifying uh, moment in our, you know, on planet Earth. I mean, it would seem like uh, the world is coming to an end. Well, the only thing that's uh, really going through uh, uh, Henry's head is how do you cope with such moments, you know? Um, and um, how do you protect your family? In the first one, we're still very much in the discovery moment, so, you know, trying, you know, realizing what's happening and having to cope with the, uh, uh, the, the present situation and how to, how to navigate that. How do you navigate? Can you walk without making noise and still manage to survive? How do you... How can you, one, protect their family in that sort of, uh, uh, you know, in this moment in time? It's, um, it's quite a challenge. I actually had the idea for day one when I was writing uh, Quiet Place Part Two, because when I wrote the opening for the Abbott family going through the circumstances of the first alien invasion, I thought um, that would be an amazing story point to drop into the real world in New York City and see how the whole rest of the world was dealing with it and certainly under probably more extreme circumstances, um, being arguably the loudest city in the world and, and how people would respond to that in great numbers. And I think New York is a place that whether you've been there or not, it is something that is familiar to you. So it's really fun to, in a, in a world like a quiet place, break down a place that you think you know and uh, put it under extraordinary circumstances. Um, and so for me, the idea of New York was always really, really enticing. Um, not only uh, how loud it is, I think it's arguably one of the loudest cities in the world, or at least as a New Yorker, we think we're the loudest city in the world. Um, and, uh, but also the, um, the bond that New Yorkers have, that there is a group mentality to being in New York. And would people um, assist and help each other? Or would they completely um, uh, leave each other in the dust and, and run for survival of their own? This idea that um, a city that we um, think we know so well under extraordinary circumstances, so tragic and so horrific that you couldn't even process them. And I think that visceral response um, is very human, that you don't have a time to make a decision. It's fight or flight. And I think that that processing moment is gone. And so you just become your most primal self. And what is that most primal self? Do you help the person next to you or do you abandon the person next to you? Lupita is one of those actresses who's going to make any single role or any single movie better, period, the end. And I think that it's because of her specificity. I think she's a very, very powerful 
um, actress, a very powerful presence. She's able to communicate such deep emotion um, in such a unique way. And it's, it's, um, it's just such a joy to watch. And what she did with this was not only incredibly difficult physically, um, but it was also incredibly difficult uh, mentally, you know, to put yourself in that position, to be terrorized for what we did in Quiet Place 2 for about 12 minutes she had to do for the entire movie. And she did it so brilliantly and so elegantly. <laughs> we were so lucky to get Joe to do this movie because I think everyone's offering him every movie on the planet right now. And I just thought he, he's, he's so technically sound and so talented. Um, and then in this movie, yet again, it's that idea of it's very difficult to play the worst day of your life and, and not let it feel too big or too melodramatic. And the way to do that is to be extremely talented and uh, be able to walk a razor's edge, which is, um, I believe, what he played so well, which is that fight or flight thing, which is there are moments where you can see the overwhelming nature of the day hit him. And then the specifics of the tiniest thing, which is this friendship with Lupita that is burgeoning right here in front of our eyes. He gets to play the specifics of how much that means to him. So all those colors and, and variations he played so well. And so that to me is, is, um, is the two of them are the heartbeat of the movie. Jaiman was actually the key that I knew would connect the two worlds. Um, I knew that his story at the fire is where I came up with the idea for the prequel, that that story that he told was so incredibly... Um, intense and so dark and you found yourself just wanting to know what was that experience like and it all happened behind his eyes he was just telling a story to Killian and I just thought what if we actually experienced his story firsthand but you didn't know it was his story you start going through it with the whole city and then you will meet Jaiman uh, in day one uh, and that'll be the link to the two stories I've been a fan of Alex's for a long time. He makes the movie so much better because he immediately grounds you in this human way. And he's, it, you just believe immediately the circumstances of the day unraveling kind of happened through Ruben's eyes. I love Alex as an actor and I, and I just loved watching him in this. I'm Michael Sarnowski. I'm the writer director of Quiet Place Day One. Initially with New York, I feel like we've seen a lot of kind of New York destruction, New York invasion movies. So. I thought it would be fun to play in that sandbox. New York disaster films are like a genre in and of themselves, so it was fun to kind of find a little niche in that. And then naturally, you know, New York is an extremely loud place, so we spend the first 25 minutes of the movie kind of in New York as it is, and it's loud and noisy and there's so much life, and then being able to switch over into the kind of quiet version, the introspective version is going to be really fun because you will know what you have lost in that process. The main thing was just being very focused on her point of view. And so the scares came naturally through that. I, I tried hard not to like force anything into that. It was just, okay, she's figuring out this world and she's exploring it. And as she figures it out, here are the things that would jump out at her and be upsetting or startling or um, terrorizing. That first Quiet Place movie was extremely memorable for everyone because it, you know, it's easy to kind of say, oh, okay, like monsters that don't make a sound or that, that don't, like you can't make a sound around, like that's, that's a cool idea, but it was watching how it was executed in a way where that was interwoven with like the form of the film so much. I mean, the sound design in that and how that plays with the main characters and like it, 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 it took sort of that concept and went beyond it and made it into such like a quality thing. It kind of elevated it and made it very character driven. And I think honestly, that was the main thing was these are movies about characters. It's a movie about a family in the first and second one. And in this one, I just wanted it to be very character focused and everything was kind of lensed through that. In a lot of ways in the other movies, the, the real heart of it is making sure that the character stories are playing. Um, so I kind of wanted to make sure I was honoring that. She brought so much emotion to the character scenes, like the scenes of, um, you know, the dialogue scenes and the scenes where she had to portray so many things that were going on from terror to sadness and uh, but then also, like, she was incredible at, like, physical performance stuff, too. I mean, doing stunt work under the cars and things like that. She can both play very subtle emotional stuff and then just, like, go do a crazy action scene, which is impressive. I mean, I can't do any of those things. Joe, I mean, the big thing for him was he sent in an audition tape that had just all the kind of sensitivity and warmth and sadness and he just had something about him that was both like 
he's he's both kind of boyish yet also wise beyond his years, and that was really important for Eric. He's kind of he's he's got a lot going on. He's he's kind of traumatized in his own way, but then he also has this kind of wisdom and and deep kindness to him. And Joe just kind of has a lot of that very authentically, um, and he's just been incredible to work with. I mean, he's so young in his career, but he's so talented and so on point with everything he does. And, you know, he's just one of those actors that you can say, like, I just needed a little more of this. And he's like, yep, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, I got it. And then he's got it. Like, he's 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 really wonderful to, to lean on. I mean, Alex Wolf. I loved working with him on my last movie, Pig. I knew I would love working with him on this. I did. He's incredibly committed. I mean, he will bleed for a role. He studied so much to, to become Ruben and was just so willing to go for it. Javon was incredible to work with. He was another, I mean, he's just a classic actor in the sense of um, can bring it, like he knows how to turn it on, turn it off, make it happen. He, I, I don't know, he was, he was a joy to work with. I was so lucky. I was so lucky to get to work with him. He was wonderful. He can bring so much intensity, but then is still just like the warmest, sweetest person. I mean, he's, he's incredible. He's an incredible talent. I think New York is um, a central character in this movie. I think everyone in the movie has their own specific relationship to the city. I think the movie plays off of the audience's relationship to the city. Um, I mean, even initially in thinking about this movie, it was about, okay, we have, there are so many movies about New York, especially New York invasion and destruction movies. Um, that's become kind of an iconic cultural thing. There is very much this sense of, Everyone has their own vision of what New York is. Uh, it's it's kind of relying on the fact that the audience has their own idea of what New York is, um, and then presenting this sort of specific version that is lensed through Sam's character. 